Like other culinary artists from West Texas Chef's Table, Chef Rory Shapizi served a meal as part of the Panhandle PBS Savor the Goods dinner series. Initially, Shapizi was just visiting the Texas Panhandle, but she stayed and set down roots among the ranchers and farmers she grew to appreciate. Shapizi focused her Savor the Goods menu on certified Angus beef from Olson Land and Cattle near Hereford. She traveled with us to the ranch to talk beef and tap dancing with Steve and Ginger Olson. When I first moved out here, I didn't even know who George Strait was. Literally, I didn't never even tasted brisket, okay? And for being a chef, it's pretty crazy. On top of it, I was a vegetarian. For eight years, I was a vegetarian. Hi, I'm Rory Shapizi, and I live right outside Amarillo, Texas, in a town called Bushland. I am the owner-operator of The Drunken Oyster, located in Amarillo. For nine years, I owned a restaurant called Boot Hill Saloon and Grill, which was a steakhouse that featured certified Angus beef. And now we are here in Hereford, Texas, to show you guys exactly where that beef comes from. Originally, I am from Bergen County, New Jersey, and it's a crazy story. I ended up on a reality show approximately 15 years ago and that reality show was filmed in a town called Vega, Texas. My family, they're all from New York and New Jersey, and they literally were like, you are not gonna make it in Texas. I thought I'd be here for about a week. 15 years later, two restaurants later, here I am. I got to experience things when I came out here that somebody from New Jersey or LA would have never seen. The Western lifestyle, the agricultural lifestyle, uh, farming and ranching was just something that I saw in movies. And I was very drawn to it. Not to mention I was drawn to the cowboys too. You know, they're kind of cute. <laughs> and so uh, that probably helped a little bit maybe meeting one of them. But, you know, I grew up in an area that I would go to the grocery store and I never thought, where does this produce come from? Where do these steaks come from? I just would go and just, they're there. I would go and grab them and never think about what it took to put these items on our table to create these amazing dishes. And so when I came out to Vega, I had the opportunity to work at feed yards, to work at ranches, to have my own cow-calf operation and really learn how hard it is and how much work goes into being able to put one steak on the table. At that point, I really started to befriend people in the cattle industry and the ranchers and just see how these families come together to produce this amazing product that we all get to sit down and enjoy. I am a graduate from the Culinary Institute of America in New York, and then I went to Johnson & Wells for hotel restaurant management. Uh, during the time that I was at CIA, I was a vegetarian the entire time, which Oh my goodness, these classic chefs, they're old German chefs, European chefs. When I was in Meat ID and Meat Fabrication, I was like, ew, meat, you know, I wouldn't eat it. So this one time, one of my chefs made me go into the meat locker, this is in Meat Fabrication class, and hug a side of beef for the entire six hour class. So at that point, although I was a vegetarian, I was like, I got this. So then I ended up slowly even when I was constructing my recipes, I would taste it and I would actually spit it out because that, I was still a vegetarian. <laughs> so one night um, I had a friend of mine said, I'll make you a deal, I'll eat fish if you eat steak. And I hadn't eaten steak in eight, it was almost eight years at this point, six, six or eight years. And uh, I said, I can't, the doctor said that I wouldn't be able to digest it. And finally I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try it. So I had a piece of filet mignon and I was so upset because I wasted years of missing out on such a great, amazing, flavorful thing. And I was like, why did I waste all this time? And so the next morning I woke up and made myself steak and eggs. That's all she wrote. Being a vegetarian definitely made me take more notice in produce and the freshness of produce. But once again, during those times I grew up I was in New Jersey and New York. And so you didn't get to see the farms. You didn't get to see these people putting the passion every day. You know, yeah, there were greenhouses in New Jersey, but it wasn't something that until you're submersed into the culture, do you have appreciation for it. So for so many people who are on the East or West Coast or in metropolitan areas that don't think about it, I wish everybody would have the opportunity to immerse themselves into the culture of the farming and ranching communities because you would just have so much more appreciation of your food.
I did a little show that I'm sure some of you have heard of called Food Network Star, and that was definitely one of the craziest, craziest, did I mention crazy, experiences of my life. Um, during the season I was on, there was initially 10 of us in a two-room apartment in the village in New York City. Uh, they had fluorescent lights on us 24-7, and it was nuts. Um, I got to meet some of the most amazing chefs that I'm still friends with to this day. It was something that I would never take back. I really wish that I had the opportunity to do it again now because I just know so much more than I did when I did the show. It's funny, people ask me all the time, what's your favorite ingredient or what's your favorite dish to cook? And the one thing I will say is just having the relationship with Certified Angus Beef and having my steakhouse, I can cook a steak. I mean, Bobby Flay and I have gone head to head. So, you know, if someone comes into my restaurant and asks for A1, it's not happening. It's funny because beef is a product that I love to work with, but I have a fresh seafood restaurant. But that also falls into it, you know, knowing the difference between fresh and, and frozen seafood. It all plays together from produce to, to uh, meat to fish. It's where is this product coming from? You know, is it just being mass produced? Or are there actually, you know, farmers and ranchers working every day to make this happen? Just like, you know, um, you know, my fishmongers who are out fishing, sending us messages at three o'clock in the morning. This is what the boat's bringing in. What would you like? What is the taste of success to you? Wow, that's a good one. Winning the lottery? <laughs> uh, the taste of success could fall into so many different things, but for me, yes, everyone can say financial. For me personally is when I put out really good product and I see smiling faces eating what we just created. Could you do anything else? I am so multi-talented. <laughs> I could do so many things, but tap dancing is the one that I'm best at. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can tap though. <laughs> so uh, I was raised showing Angus heifers and uh, went off to Texas A&M to study animal science. And at the time that I had an older brother, a year older in A&M, in and uh, my dad wasn't just real excited about who I was dating. In fact, he was a preacher. Can you imagine? He, he told my brother to find someone else, and this is who he found. It was Steve. First of all, I want you to, to say both your names, uh, where we are, and what you do. And then I want to ask you uh, how you got, how you won her over. <laughs> oh. So I'm Steve Olson, this is my wife, Ginger. We are located about 12 miles southeast of Hereford. We ranch for a living. We got acquainted at Texas A&M University. Her brother actually lived above me in dormitory and introduced us, and she was a blind date. And we hit it off, and here we are. We did okay, we dated, and uh, just loved being at A&M. He came home to farm when he graduated. He was two years older, and, and I got through A&M, and we moved up here, and life has been good ever since. Steve grew up raising shorthorns, and so when we dated at a and I was Miss Texas Angus at the time, and he would take me to different functions, and it would be the shorthorn reader from Hereford, Texas, was escorting Miss Texas Angus. So we had a lot of fun with that going through college. And uh, as you see now, the cattle are black. My dowry came with one black horse and three black cows, and I always kidded him, my cows were better than his. And uh, the horse was terrible. <laughs> we raise Angus cattle because they are the premier breed and the demand for them is higher than any, any other breed. And certainly uh, when we started in 1980, CAB was just beginning and just beginning to get a foothold, uh, the Certified Angus Beef Program. And uh, since that time, it, it has grown along with our Angus breed because of the demand. 
We have a little over 250 mother cows that we keep on the ranch year round. And then uh, they calve every year, so we have calves to go with that. We are actually environmentally friendly, have been for all of our lives. Uh, the, the word sustainability has come to be a buzzword in our industry, and to me that, that means three things, basically. We have to take care of our land and natural resources. We have to take care of our cattle, and we have to take care of the people that are helping us, and that requires a profit, and that's where CAB comes into a premium product at a better price for us and allows us to do that. What is it about a baby cow? Oh, wow. One of the joys of being a rancher is watching that little group of babies that are two weeks old, and they're out there playing with one another, butting heads, kicking up their heels, and just having the best time, and that's just a real joy. My role at the ranch is family. Um, our lifestyle revolves around family. We chose to stay on the, the ranch and raise our children. Um, and as a result, they have a love, they grew a love for the ranch. They each went off and majored in agriculture, married agriculture uh, spouses, and we're so fortunate that they live within 30 miles of us and all engaged in agriculture. We have the opportunity to work together all the time. Steve and I spend seven days a week together. Uh, he doesn't go off to an office. I'm with him a lot of the time. Uh, he does like to escape every once in a while and play golf. I don't do that. <laughs> and when he does that, I do grandkids. Satisfaction of um, producing something that is that others enjoy uh, that's that's totally behind it all, uh, and then get to live live out here in the country uh, and take care of what God has given us is uh, really uh, uh, a joy to us and really uh, makes you feel good. Could you do anything else? Oh sure, but we love what we do. So why would we want to try? I sure can't tap dance. <laughs> <laughs>